In our final section, we take the milling business to its logical conclusion, selling the wood. There's a lot to know here, but let's take a look at the broad concept with Dan. How do we figure out how many board feet we're getting out of these logs? Uh, measuring timber is a is an interesting situation. There's a number of different systems that can be used. But they're not complicated. You just kind of have to understand these systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're called usually uh, log, uh, um, log measurement systems. And, there, and there's three. Uh, there was about 100 log rules used in this country and Canada off and on over the years, 100 of them, 96 to be exact. And it's come down to about three that are important at this point. That's Doyle. International and Scribner. Uh, Scribner was predominantly used by the Forest Service and they've changed their system some over the years more to weight scaling. Uh, so that one's not used much in the eastern United States but you'll run into it in the western U.S. Okay. Uh, there's also the international scale and that scale is probably the most accurate for predicting volume uh, of lumber in a log or in a tree. You, mm -hmm. can, you gotta do this either by trees or by logs. And finally, the one that is most commonly used, at least in the central Midwest, is the Doyle log scale. A very simple system, goes back to the early 1800s, and it has just stuck by tradition uh, year after year, and uh, everybody uses it. Uh, so it's not like you're cheating somebody, because mm -hmm. sawmill A, sawmill B, sawmill C all do the Doyle scale, so they're all competing on the Doyle scale. If one uses the Doyle scale and one uses the international scale, then you got real trouble. Sure. That you don't want to get into. The international scale is used in, in different parts of the eastern U.S. yet. So you need to be sure uh, to, uh, uh, if you're using a table or one of these scale sticks, you need to be sure to read on there um, what, the, what the tree scale stick is for. This says Doyle Le Rule right on the side of it. Mm -hmm. So you know this is Doyle. I've got another one up in the house that says international. So I sure don't want to grab the international stick uh, and compete with somebody that's using the oil stick. So uh, before we get too far, we should talk about board feet. What is a board foot? A board foot is a piece that's uh, one inch thick, 12 inches wide, and one foot long. Or it's just one square foot that's one inch thick. And that can be confusing too because if you go to the softwood industry, um, they have nominal dimensions and a two by four is what's used to figure the volume of the piece of lumber but the piece of lumber is only an inch and a half thick by three and a half inches wide, as an example. Sure. And the hardwood people uh, have uh, some of their own issues with lumber thickness. Uh, they go by four quarter, five quarter, six quarter, seven quarter, eight quarter lumber, and uh, eight quarter lumber being technically two inches thick. Mm -hmm. Eight over four is two. Yep. And they usually throw in an eighth or even a quarter of an inch uh, at the sawmill because you have sawing variation, you have shrinkage, and by the time all that's over with, you're down to about two inches or a little bit less. And four quarter lumber is typically an inch and a sixteenth to an inch and an eighth thick green. Sure. Uh, so you get a little bit of overage in the hardwood industry. Softwood industry, you get some shortage. <laughs> so uh, how do we figure out how much board feed is in one of these logs? Well, let's assume, uh, let's assume we're going to use the Doyle scale. Okay. which is what's on this stick right here. So that just kind of looks like a, a yardstick. Yeah, it's just like a yardstick. It's got all the numbers on here. Uh, you can buy them probably over the internet pretty easy uh, from a forestry supply house. Mm -hmm. And uh, foresters typically use this one. Uh, this one is also used to measure standing timber. You can hold this from your eye uh, a certain distance. I think it's 25 inches on this one. Sight this on one side of the tree. Sight this number on the other side of the tree. And that gives you the diameter of the tree and then you estimate the number of logs in the tree, you come down here and read the footage. For example, a 24 inch tree, uh, which is a big tree with three 16 foot logs, will have 496 board feet doyle in it. <laughs> we need to go to the log, mm -hmm. is what we're really after here. And uh, this is a white oak chinkapin log. Uh, it goes in the white oak pile. It's tec technically a chinkapin species, but it's still considered white oak lumber when it's cut. And uh, veneer people, the only difference that you can tell, the veneer people tell me it has a slight uh, greenish cast in the veneer. Okay. We're probably not going to see it in the lumber, sure. would be my guess. So what happens is you go to the small end of the log and you measure the diameter this way. Uh, so we put that right down there and we're right at about, looks like about 24, 25 inches. And then if it's egg-shaped or something, you want to measure it both ways. Um, 
So we'll call this a 24 inch inside bark, small end is where the measurement's taken. Inside so you're taking, bark, small taking end. it inside the bark. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you do have to be careful doing it because it will make a difference. So on this now it says uh, diameter of the log at the small end. So we'll go over here to 24 inches. And it is a 12 foot log, which is that line right there, which says uh, 300 board feet, Doyle scale is the estimate for the amount of lumber that should come out of this log. And it has issues. It's got a split right here on this end, mm -hmm. which isn't too much for me to worry about. But the other hand has uh, a couple of two, three different shakes and splits in it, which will make it a very interesting log to saw and will probably lose some volume. So if this log were to go to a traditional sawmill, they'd probably cut that back maybe uh, uh, down to at least a 10 foot log, if not shorter, because of the issues it's got on the bottom, on the end. We're going to go ahead and saw it and see what we can get out of it eventually. So Dan, I know lumber grading in and of itself is uh, kind of a science and an art, but um, let's get a high level overview here. Okay, lumber grading is a, there's, there's a lot to it. You absolutely have to understand these grades if you're going to be involved in the traditional industry at all. And I maintain if you're selling lumber, you need to understand these grades regardless of how little or how much you're, you're selling because the whole pricing structure is tied to the grades. Mm -hmm. And they are involved. They are complicated. This is the grading book. These rules are living. They get changed, proposed changes every four years, and they reprint a new book with those changes. 100 pages now, I guess. And it's involved, it's complicated, but it all comes down to this table right here. And this table and explanation of this table is in a publication from Purdue University on quality control hardwood lumber grading. FAS stands for first and seconds grade, and it's the, it's the top quality uh, grade mm -hmm. in hardwood lumber. And it's the premium grade, obviously. There's one grade right below that called F1F, or one face lumber, and it has a selects, it has a one common on the back side and an FAS on one side, okay. face side. So it's kind of a compromised grade. But you, you have a good show face. We have a good show face, yeah. yeah. And selects is the same way, except selects is uh, uh, shorter, narrower lumber on the lower end. Okay, maybe. so it, the pieces aren't as big. The pieces say. aren't as big. The, the lumber piece is not as big. Mm -hmm. Then we have one common, which is kind of a workhorse of the industry. Yep. It's kind of an average grade. If you don't know what to use in the traditional industry, you use one common lumber, mm -hmm. which you should know what to use, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> uh, and then we got a 2A and a 2B, and we got a 3A and a 3B. Uh, 2A and 2B have become, uh, 2A means sound cuttings, 2B means uh, not sound cuttings, okay. and that gets fairly involved. Uh, but those grades are becoming a little bit more important to some of us smaller operators because people are asking for rustic lumber. Sure. In the past, all 3A and B was in below grade was dumped into pallet camps and even some 2. Mm -hmm. But uh, in oak now, 2A and 2A particularly is worth a little bit of money, more than pallet camps, so a lot of mills are cutting 2A lumber. Now the factors that affect uh, these grades, the first thing, the easiest one, is the minimum size board. And the minimum size board for FAS is six inches wide and eight feet long. This is a lumber grading rule, standard rule that's used in the industry unless they're doing automated grading. Uh, the rule is three feet long, uh, so it can be used for a measuring stick. You just tip it as you go on down the board and get the length of your board. And the, the uh, board lengths are given on both ends here, I guess, on this one. This is 12, 10, 14, and 16. And then we have odd links over here, 9, 11, 13, and 15. If you get something else, you can split the even links, uh, like for an 8-foot board, or you can buy a rule with 8-foot markings on it. Mm -hmm. And if we go back to the 12-foot uh, rule here, this is just like a perfect yardstick. It's all in inches. So if you've got a 12-foot long board and it's 12 inches wide, you should have 12 board feet. And if you look down here, right there's the 12. And if you lay a tape measure on there, that'll be exactly 12 inches. Or if you've got a six inch wide piece, you'll have six board feet, or the lumber graders call it surface measure, six feet of surface measure, because they're only measuring the surface of the board. And if they do four quarter lumber, that's the answer right there. If they're doing eight quarter lumber, at the end of the day, they turn in their tally, and the manager just multiplies times two. So he's got eight quarter lumber. It's really a clever, unique, efficient system. Um, what about this head here? Uh, this head is uh, three inches wide. 
and a lot of the cuttings that are allowed are three inches. Okay. So if you get close, you can just lay that down there and you say, well, I don't even have close to three inches here. We'll lay it over here. And I've got from there to there, I've probably got about four inches. And thickness can be measured here too. Right there is one inch. So if you want to check your thickness for four quarter lumber, uh, you use the one inch scale and two inches right up here. Some of these have a go, no go gauge on them, which is even nicer than what this one is. Uh, we've got a bunch of boards here that we've milled. You've milled. <laughs> and, Logan uh, milled. <laughs> Logan milled them. Um, and so how would you go about grading these? Well, the first thing that has to be done is you've got to pick your board. And lumber is typically graded from the best side of the piece, except for one face and selects lumber. So we flop this thing over, and because of that weighing down here, this is the best side of the piece. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got clear wood all the way down here to where this knot is, and then we got we obviously have issues here. So this side, well, let me back up here a little bit. So we back up to this side, and I'm looking at this board, and it's a 10-foot board. So to, to get that number, to check it, we'd come down here. There's three, uh, there's six, there's nine, and there's 14 inches or 15 inches left over. So it's a, it's a 10 foot board. So what are we gonna do with this board? Uh, we could probably grade a common on this side. The other side may not make FAS. I'd have to measure it out to, to tell you that to be exact. But to me, this little bit of Wayne ought to be trimmed off of here because in the first and seconds rule, Wayne is only allowed halfway down the length of the board. And so we're right about there. That's pretty close. So yeah. you, could, you could get away with that. You could leave it on, but it's gonna hurt your yield. And on neural or lumber like this one over here, mm -hmm. we got a lot of weighing on here, and this will never, this board at six inches could make FAS, but with that weighing on there and that width to measure from, it's, it's, it's not gonna make it. So sure. that has to be ripped off, okay? So I'm looking at this board right here, and for sure what could be done for it is to cut it off at nine foot. There's some issues with knot size that are covered in the rules. There's some issues with the end foot. Uh, you can't have more than a third, I think, of the, end foot in, in Wayne, and we got more than a third here. So we'd be better off to come up here, cut this thing off at nine foot, and edge it up a little bit, and it's either gonna be one face or first and second board. And what we're looking for is the amount of clear material in that board. We're not looking at the whole board, we're looking at the amount of clear material, and it has to be a certain size, depending on grade. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a certain percentage of that clear wood in the board, depending on the size of the board. So okay. it comes down to these cutting sizes. And the higher the grade, the bigger the cutting sizes have to be. And so do you grade all of your lumber here? Uh, I can grade lumber slowly if I have to. Okay. But what it comes down to is it's kind of like the rules. Select and better, uh, one common, two common. Mm -hmm. So I got a good, I got a bad, and I got an indifferent. And that's, that's probably your rustic. It's roughly, yeah, it's okay. roughly facing better, one common and, and rustic. That's our series on milling your own lumber. I hope you've learned a lot. I know I have. And I want to thank our hosts, Dan Cassens and Logan Wells, for sharing their knowledge and experiences. Thanks for watching.